kanalen. I dag ska vi ta upp något intressant tema. Så jag sätter över till studio. Thank you very much for joining us today during the conference and presentation of the two years report. Report that is the fruit of two years uh, research and analysis done by the team of the Ordo Iuris Institute. The report titled Children's Rights Pitted Against Children, the Legal Framework and Practice of Barnabernet Functioning in the Perspective of International Legal Standards. Uh, the copy of the report is available for you. It is the preliminary version of the report. We will uh, accept any comments and remarks during today's expert panel that will follow after the presentation of the report. And the final version of the report will be given and published next week in the book version and will be uh, delivered to all the actors that are important for the Barnabernet reform or for the international child protection services. Uh, in, mostly in Europe. We are also very active in the field of the European Union law and the European Court of Human Rights, so we will also deliver the copy of the report in all the cases uh, that are pending before the European Court of Human Rights. Let me introduce ourselves uh, in the very beginning. Uh, I am Jerzy Kwaśniewski, I'm attorney at law and the president of the Ordo Juris Institute for Legal Culture and two of my friends attorneys from the Institute, uh, Bartosz Zalewski and Filip Bołoszczak uh, are together with me. We are the co-authors uh, of, the, of the report, not all of them, but some of them because the, the, the report was, uh, was, was, um, was developed in a, a huge team of mo mostly eight people. And let me, uh, let me welcome Jan Ogetorp who is together with us, our friend from Norway, from the very, very beginning, from the first day I arrived here in 2017, uh, in August, uh, when I started my research on the Barna Vernet issue after two months of my cooperation with Cydia Garmo, uh, who escaped uh, to Poland uh, after the uh, Barna Vernet tried to take over uh, care of her little daughter, Aira. A uh, few words about the Ordo Iuris Institute. Uh, the Institute is an independent legal organization incorporated as a foundation in Poland and independent uh, of any public funding or state funding in Poland or abroad. We are financed only by private um, donors and that those are thousands of Polish families donating monthly uh, uh, to the development and the uh, daily, daily activities of Ordo Juris Institute. Ordo Juris Institute gathers academics and legal <laughs> practitioners aiming at promotion of legal culture based on the respect for human dignity and natural rights. We pursue our objectives by means of research, other academic activities, as well as advocacy and litigation on national and international and European level. A third, part, third party interventions by Ordo Juris have been accepted by Polish and international courts and institutions, including, of course, Polish Supreme Court and Constitutional Tribunal, the European Committee of Social Rights, European Court of Human Rights. Uh, the Ordo Juris Institute submitted its opinions uh, and were most asked for opinions by Venice Commission, the Secretary General of the Council of Europe, Commissioner for Human Rights of the Committee and Political Affairs and Democracy of the <coughs> Parliamentary Assembly of uh, Council of Europe. Uh, we cooperate with Libe Committee of the European Parliament, with United Nations Human Rights Council. We submitted our uh, opinions and written uh, submissions to the Supreme Court of Brazil, Supreme Court of Croatia, uh, for instance. Uh, the foundation is accredited to the European Parliament and registered. The, we are participating with our uh, second seat in Brussels in the, actively in the decision making and the in the processes of law in European Union. Moreover, Ordo Juris has an economic and social council of United Nations consultative status in United Nations as one of few Polish organizations only. And for instance, our voice was to be heard during the Nairobi summit in November last year. Together with Janogetorp, we were there. Uh, 
we were granted leave by the European Court of Human Rights <coughs> to contribute our written observations in 16 pending Norwegian cases concerning Barna Vernet in the European Court of Human Rights and our, our written observations were submitted in November 2019 and in fact the written observations delivered to the European Court of Human Rights uh, summarizes uh, the results of our research that are uh, also presented in the report. As I mentioned, we started our uh, interest and research on Barna Vernet and Child Protection Services in Norway in 2017, but since foundation of Ordo Iuris in 2013, we are working with Child Protection Services both in Poland and abroad, mostly in Germany, United Kingdom, sometimes the Netherlands and France. Uh, every year, our litigation department uh, supports 600 families in Poland uh, in their cases concerning mostly child protection services in Poland. So we are aware that the problem of child protection services and the problem of striking a balance between the best interest of the child and the autonomy of the family is not only a Scandinavian, Norwegian, German, French, English or Polish issue. It is something that we have to deal all together as Europeans and representatives of the European circle of legal culture. Uh, in 2019, we have presented our preliminary uh, uh, results of the report during the round table of experts under the Chatham House rules in Oslo in January last year. Uh, the results and remarks given by the experts in Oslo, the <coughs> experts on human rights, uh, were uh, also uh, taken into account while drafting the report. The first version of the report was consulted during the site event organized in the, Europe, uh, in, in the Parliament Assembly of the Council of Europe in Strasbourg in June 2019. Our report may be summarized in one general observation, pointing to the source and the gravest error of the Norwegian Child Protection Service, Barna Vernet, the departure from the fundamental principle of family reunification in all cases where the measures of last resort, separation of the child from its family, were implemented by the authorities. European Court of Human Rights noted that regard for family unity and family reunification in the event of separation are inherent considerations in the right to respect for family life under the Article 8 of the European um, Charter of Human Rights. Although national authorities enjoy a wide margin of discretion in assessing the necessity of taking custody of the child, this discretion is not unlimited as the tribunal underlines. The discretion is more restricted when we are dealing with fundamental rights. Such rights unquestionably include the right to an undistributed family, uh, undisturbed family life and parental contact with the right to raise one's own biological children. Even in 1988, the court confirmed that, in fact, exercising parental rights itself constitutes a fundamental element of family life. So th those are two sides, the best interest of the child and the rights of the parents joined together into the family life autonomy and the family life um, respect that is one of the fundamental rights. And also one of the fundamental rights of children at both the international level of the protection and the legal systems of many countries is the right to live and be brought up in their biological family. In the preamble of the Convention on the Rights of the Child, to which Norway is also a part of course, and as you may not know, the Convention on the Rights of the Child was firstly drafted in Poland in 1970s by Professor Smyczyński, and afterwards <coughs> the works in the United Nations were also uh, <coughs> leaded by uh, Polish lawyers in the 80s. 
And according in, in the preamble of the Convention on the Rights of the Child, it is clearly stated that the child for the full and harmonious development of his or her personality should grow up in a family environment. The state has also a positive obligation to make measures to facilitate family reunification as soon as possible. This is why the European Court of Human Rights pointed out in Strandloben that in the case of imposition of public care restricting family life, a positive duty lies on the authorities to take measures to facilitate family reunification as soon as reasonably feasible. And this is the general observation of the report that the Norwegian authorities in their policy of foster care, in their policy of child protection services have departed from this basic fundamental element uh, of the of the Article 8 of the respect for family life, the need for family reunification. And what are the results of this departure? Long-lasting separation, fast-track adoption procedures easily done without consent of the biological parents, discrimination of minorities, ethnic minorities, religious minorities, national minorities, children being deprived in many reported cases of their fundamental rights to self-development in line with their national religious language identities. Lack of cooperation with parents who need support after the last resort measure has been implemented. Non-transparent cooperation and personal connections of Barnard, Barnett, Bouvdir and private companies managing the foster care families. And many reported informations by, by the experts, by the Norwegian experts also, that there are many foster families dependent in their income on their foster family status that itself uh, creates a group of interest in the system. Therefore, in the, in the opinion of the Ordo Juris Institute, public authorities should always rely on the presumption that the child's best interest is best served with his or her biological family and any doubts shall be resolved in favor of the parents. And only if there is a substantial and credible evidence that contradicts this presumption, public authorities should, uh, should endeavor to preserve child's interest outside its biological family. Even so, the state shall continue to attempt to re-establish the sound relationship between the child and its parents by appropriate measures such as regular contact, contact visits performed under super supervision of social service workers and unsupervised meetings as well. Psychological assistance to both parents and their child and to reports prepared by independent experts with the special stress given on the rights of the minorities and with the special stress granted to the uh, rights to the identity of the child, ethnic, language, religious, national identity of the child. Parents should be given the opportunity to change their destructive, their destructive or in either other way unacceptable behavior that led to the separation and to improve their care skills in order to prepare reunification with their child. In other words, in the opinion of Ordo Juris Institute, Article 8 of the Convention should be interpreted by the Norwegian authorities as a right to a second, a third, a fourth, and a fifth chance for the parents to reunificate with the child and for the child to reunificate with the parents in the biological family. <coughs> now we'll follow with the brief presentation of the parts of the report. The, pre the report itself is given to you so uh, you, can, you, you can read all the details given in the report. Uh, Bartosz Zalewski will present the general structure of the report and then we will follow with the short presentation on the uh, general results of the proceedings in the European Court of Human Rights given by Philip Wojtek. Thank you very much. <coughs> so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's our pleasure to present the first comprehensive study uh, about Baron Vernet practice and the legal frameworks um, in the uh, perspective of international law standards. Uh, I think that it's also valuable 
that it's prepared by independent non-governmental uh, organization. We analyzed legal regulations, their interpretation, their implementation, and finally consequences of this situation for children and parents' rights. Uh, for our research team, the statistics and case studies were equally important because only that way we could describe the whole system uh, from the perspective of human rights. Uh, firstly, I would like to um, briefly describe the course of uh, works over the report. Uh, they have started in um, early summer 2018 uh, and they took about 18 months. Uh, we sent three requests uh, for information to Bavdir and one to Norwegian Embassy in Warsaw. We also organized two expert panel discussions on the report, both in Oslo and in Strasbourg, during the um, session of Parliamentary Assembly of Council of Europe. And we read dozens of judgments and documents. To my surprise, uh, I have to say that data collection was one of the most difficult tasks. Contrary to our presumptions uh, of transparency of Norwegian authorities, research requests submitted to Bavdir were ignored for long months, as you can see on the uh, slide. In cooperation with Norwegian embassy uh, in Warsaw was much easier, uh, but uh, embassy officials uh, had no access to any data which we couldn't find ourselves on the websites of, Baf uh, of Baftir or Statistics of Norway. After this preparatory stage of works, we organized a research visit in Oslo. It took place in January 2019. The round table of experts, lawyers, Norwegian and European politicians, as well as social activists who were engaged in cases connected with Barney Barnett was held under Chatham House rules. Our in invitations to uh, the expert round table sent to the authorities, both children of Guzman and to Bavdir, <coughs> were ignored. The protocol uh, from this discussion is enclosed to the report as the first appendix, so you can read it. Um, uh, we also had a uh, meeting with parents whose children were, take, uh, were taken away uh, by Barna Vernet. And we held query in the library of the Faculty of Law at University of Oslo, where we have found uh, very interesting <coughs> materials which are not available in Poland. So as you can see, we use different sources of information uh, which make our report unique. Uh, in May, 2019, we were ready to organize presentation of a pre uh, preliminary draft of our report on the side event held during the session of Parliamentary Assembly of Council of Europe. Together with author of Parliamentary Assembly's um, uh, report on Barna Barnett, Valeriu Gilecci, uh, and Ukrainian member of Pace, uh, Pavlo Hungarian, and also president of uh, European Apostolic Leaders, our friend uh, Jana Getop. This discussion was open to public and each member of parliamentary delegation could take the floor, but no one from Norwegian delegation uh, uh, appeared. Next months were uh, very important. Uh, when our work was coming to the end, European Court of Human Rights uh, issued a judgment in the case of Trude Strand Loben. Uh, as we know, uh, the court had that there was a violation of Article 8 of European Convention on Human Rights uh, and uh, this judgment confirmed many of our uh, of the arguments articulated in our draft report uh, as were presented before in Strasbourg. Uh, now let me briefly describe uh, the structure of our report. Uh, so it consists of six chapters, uh, preceded by a description of the main 29 uh, conclusions and recommendations. First chapter has an introductory character. Uh, we describe Barne Varnet in historical perspective and shortly indicate our methodological uh, assumptions. 
Next three chapters consist of description of substantial conditions for depriving parents custody over children, foster care, and procedural issues. Fifth chapter, which I think is very important, is connected mostly with rights of children from national, ethnical, linguistic, and religious minorities. Uh, in the last chapter, we describe how Barnevernet is perceived by selected domestic and foreign media. Uh, at the end of the report, you will also find two appendices. Uh, the first one is the protocol of, from our meeting, as I said, and uh, the second one is small dictionary uh, of basic terms, which could be unknown for many people even here from Norway, like Bavdir, Bavdir, etc. As you can see, our study presents all issues connected with child protection system in Norway. Uh, so it's uh, so in comprehensive way um, this issue are presented and they are presented from different point of views. Uh, we can also define some of the main problems of child protection system. Uh, firstly, protection of children's rights in foster care uh, which are not sufficient. Uh, only for example, there is no prohibition for separation of siblings. The best example is the case of Bodnariu family. Uh, as we know, in 2015, five children uh, were taken away from their parents and they were, uh, they were placed in three different foster families. And according to resolution of Parliamentary Assembly of Council of Europe, uh, entitled Striking a Balance Between the Best Interest of Child and the Need to Keep Families Together, siblings shouldn't be separated during placement in foster care. The second crucial issue is that Barnevern Loven, uh, in Barnevern Loven, there is only one regulation dedicated to children from national or religious minorities. They are usually placed in foster care of people of different cul culture, different language and faith, which is very dangerous for their ident identity. The practice of not taking into account the foster family's ability to ensure the child's identity may also be considered as discrimination. There are no statistics which would allow verification of what of to what extent the group of foster families reflects the current social structure and takes into account ethnic and religious diversity of population of Norway. Uh, that is very significant. This is so important issue and there is no available statistics and no statistics collected by Baftir. We asked about them and we received um, answer that they do not collect such data. Mm. And according to um, Parliamentary Assembly Resolution, uh, religious, ethnic and cultural background must be taken into account when child is placed in foster care. Uh, another important issue are rights of parents. Uh, <coughs> here the biggest problem are contacts of biological <coughs> parents with children placed in foster care. Three or four meetings per year which is not uncommon in Norway, must be considered as the violation of the right to protection of family life. It was confirmed by judgments in Janssen and Loben cases. The analysis of the case law of Supreme Court of Norway and the examples of judgments you can see behind me uh, mm, uh, lead us to clear conclusion that the limitation of parents' rights uh, to have contact with their children for only a few short meetings a year is fully accepted in Norway. We also found out that there is no sufficient regulation to prevent unclear re relations between private care institutions and Barnevernet. In last years, about 3,000 children were placed in such institutions, and so we can see uh, um, that it is the issue of great importance. It's also known that there is a flow of employees between such institutions and Barnevernet, and this can lead to various types of uh, irregularities. And some of them were um, described by uh, media. Uh, there are also many problematic issues in practical application of Barnevernet. 
section 412, uh, which is the legal basis for taking children away from parents, uh, is interpreted in arbitrary way. Moreover, we observe tendency to redefine the principle of the best interest of the child. Many of the Barnevernet activities seem to develop, uh, to implement the alternative principle formulated in the OUA report of 2012, the principle of the optimal development environment without due um, respect for self-standing value of biological bonds. This approach is an obvious violation of the human rights principle of respect for family life. Uh, and it was reaffirmed in strand Loban judgment. Uh, European uh, Court of Human Rights once again confirmed that personal ties between natural parents and their child, uh, children must be preser preserved as long as uh, there are no exceptional circumstances. After placing children in foster care, family should be reunited as soon as possible and it is also in the best interest of a child. Also measures used by um, social uh, services must be proportionate to the situation. Emergency orders are extraordinary measures which shouldn't be overused. In recent years we could observe tendency to issue almost as many emergency orders as regular decisions. And what you can see on the um, on the diagram um, behind me. According to data presented in documents of Parliamentary Assembly of Council of Europe, uh, in 2015 there were even more interim orders than regular decisions. And we have to remember, each interim order must be confirmed by regular decisions. So that's the question. Why there was more interim orders? Uh, unfortunately, this data, and we know that from Bavdir, are not collected since 2016. Um, this is symptomatic because these data are crucial um, for understanding the deficit of Barnevernet system. And they are uh, they were stopped um, to collect just after the case of Bodnario family. In conclusion, uh, Norwegian child protection system needs a structural reform. This could be done uh, by amending the law and elimination of provisions which can be interpreted in an arbitrary way and used as grounds for placing a children in foster care. Introduction uh, of mechanism which would oblige Barnevernet uh, to fully examine all circumstances which might justify uh, an intervention regarding family life. Better verification of all notifications and of course full participation of parents and children of in all stages of procedures. Uh, we also think that there's a real need for reform of educational system of social workers. The axiological basis of the whole system must be changed. We could say that Norwegian society is standing in front of some kind of philosophical questions. Uh, what is better for future generations? Omnipotent state, as we know from, for example, Plato or Hegel's philosophy, or maybe the respect for family autonomy and the subsidiarity principle. These are fundamental questions of the future, and we hoped that our report will be useful for, for finding the answers for these questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, and Philip Wojtak on the uh, jurisprudence of the European Court of Human Rights. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, for some time, international criticism of the barn awareness system has been arising more and more. Uh, it, is ma it is manifesting in uh, very, very broadly. For example, starting with Valery Gilecci report adopted by Council of Europe, granting the asyl of Celia Garmor in Republic of Poland, or the Yuri's presentation in the Council of Europe that took place last, uh, last year in June, our OBVUE presentations concerning Barna Vernet, and finally, the case law of Re European uh, Court of Human Rights, which in his recent judgment indicate what systematic deficiencies 
it can find in Barna Werner's system. In our opinion, it is very encouraging that in two months of last year, from June to August 2019, uh, new, 20 new, new cases were communicated by the European Tribunal of Human Rights to government of Kingdom of Norway. Uh, the all cases concern Barna Vernet system and the breaches, breaches of human rights, especially Article 8. In 16 of those cases, Ordo Iuris uh, sent an uh, amicus curiae opinion, and in eight of them we have applied for a consent to present that kind of opinion, and we are still waiting for <coughs> the consent to be granted. At this point, I would like to present what conclusions can be made and can be drawn from the rulings of European Tribunal of Human Rights concerning the Barna Vernet system. First of all, uh, as the biggest sin, it has to be uh, stated the concept of the good of the child adopted by Barna Vernet system. The Norwegian state emphasizes material issues of child development. It, uh, it can be found in the report that uh, the percentage of the children pick up from the unemployed families of families where the parents are uh, performing physical work. It, uh, children took from these families are 7 out of 10, so very big percentage in our opinion. And the system omits the basis uh, needs of the child, which are elementary of the proper growth and development of the child. As a consequence, the, va the values arising from the deep bond between the child and uh, biological parents are totally abandoned. As a result, the recognition of the family as a value itself is also abandoned, and the consequently the family and its in interest is, no, is not taken into consideration at all. The issue of a uh, uh, faulty recognition of child, child's good entails further weaknesses in the system. Uh, the consequence uh, of this is separation the good of the child from the goof, good of the parent, the parents, and the omission of the family as whole, as uh, ch ch children and the parents. Uh, therefore, the uh, tribunal criticized the Barney Vernet approach of denying of importance of maintaining emo emotional ties with biological parents and in return taking account of contacts between the child and biological parents only to on the plane of knowledge about children's origin. Because of this, <coughs> contacts are established in a way that do not ensure the parent-child re child relationship is uh, man maintained. The court emphasized that it is in the best interest of the child to maintain all links with their bio bio biological parents. Uh, in addition, widely criticized are also solutions adopted by Barna Verne. As the principle of the European Tribunal of Human Rights, it is, ac uh, it is accepted that separating child from the parent should be only temporary and exceptional. This assumption imposes a number of positive obligations to the state. The state, in the first place, should strictly monitor the application and implementation of measures uh, which consist in separating children from the parents, uh, where, where the reference point to that should be the right to respect the family life as it is indicated in Article 8 of the Convention of Human Rights. Measures that break the bond and are not aimed at returning the child to the family should only be used in very exceptional cases. The state is obligated, therefore, to take in the first place a number of measures to prevent taking the child from the, uh, from the family and to repair what the system thinks it uh, is not working in one family. <coughs> it should first use measures that interfere less with family autonomy, taking account the principle, as it was said before, of subsidiarity. 
In case of taking away of the child, as I mentioned, it should be temporary. And this another positive uh, obligation of the state uh, is to do everything possible to reunite the family, to stop the uh, uh, taking ch children into foster care. Therefore, the European Tribun Tribunal of Human Rights negatively assess activities involving the automatic remo the removal of children from, uh, from families and se setting up a foster care system that assumes long-term uh, long term and, no, and no remedial proceedings. Uh, that is due to the fact that the tribunal recognized the bond with a biologi biological parent and the children maintains is the in the biologi biological family as, as, a, value, as a value itself uh, and it, it emphasizes that it should be protected because being in the biological family is strictly connected with the child's best interests. This is the best interest of the child to be and to be brought up in a uh, biological family. And what is more interesting uh, this is not uh, the jurisdiction of European Tribunal of Human Rights, but it's a uh, district or in Warsaw, which, uh, which is very strict to that last, last time. Uh, the court in Warsaw, in the last case that we were uh, helping in, did not send, did not, extra, did not l let extradite a citizen of Bulgaria to Norway because court decided that here in Norway, according to uh, jurisprudence of European Tribunal of Human Rights and uh, Consul Kowalski statement, that his human rights can be violated here. So as we can see, the criticism of the system that we can hear on the international grounds can be heard also in daily life, as we can see. And let's hope that all new 24 cases will be maybe a spark for the government to change the system in favor of families and children to, to protect their best interests and rights. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I will just add that, <coughs> yes, of course, we have seen that the verdicts, the decisions of the Polish courts that refused to give over uh, citizens of Norway or a citizen of uh, Russian Federation who escaped from Sweden uh, to their to the Scandinavian countries because of the risk of the violation of the basic human rights of the Article 8, the uh, respect for family life, uh, and that was done under the regime of the European arrest warrant. Uh, principles. So uh, we can see and we experience the results of this criticism of the human rights violations in northern European countries. And going back before 2015, 2016, where this debate started on, we can observe, and it was observed in the doctrine of law, of the family law on the international level, that we have at least two models of the child protection services active in Europe, the southern and northern model with the different position of the family in the structure of the state, with the, sub with the principle of subsidiarity in the southern model, where the family is the prior and basic <coughs> structure of the society, that can be assisted by the state, but that can be influenced only in the, uh, in, the, in, in the situation of the violation of the basic needs of the child. And we have the second model, the Northern European model, where the state takes over the responsibility to bring up children and grants, in fact, uh, the possibility to grow up the children uh, to the family and, <coughs> uh, and takes over 
uh, and, and implements all the control uh, tools to uh, um, uh, to evaluate uh, to evaluate how is the family doing in the uh, execution of this of this obligation. In the last years, what we can see in the European Court of Human Rights, in the Council of Europe, with this uh, resolution of June 2019, drafted by Valeriu Gilecki, is that the sovereign model of, subs of subsidiarity is taking over and is implemented as the binding uh, implementation of the Article 8 and the uh, uh, respect for family life. And what is the f outcome of this debate that is already over after the strand Loben case and other cases uh, in, uh, in European Court of Human Rights? It is the need to reform the northern model in the states that have implemented the northern model of the child protection services. And elements of the northern model of child protection services were implemented in many European countries, not only in Scandinavia, not only in Norway, uh, in Sweden, in Germany, the Netherlands, England, but also the elements of the, of the northern model system were implemented in Poland in 2010. We have provisions of law very similar to the Norwegian uh, law on Barna Barnett. The practice, the law in practice is totally different, yes. But the provisions of law are very, very different since 2010. So we all need to implement the decisions of the European Court of Human Rights and we all need to work on that and finding out the best solutions to strike the balance, as it is said in the resolution of June 2019, between the best interest of the child and the, um, and the need for family reunification and the need to uh, protection of the family life. Jan Age, I would like to ask you for the comment uh, yes. The first of the comments today to, the, to, to our report, uh, we were working together uh, since the first visit uh, in <laughs> Oslo uh, concerning Silvio Garmo case, yeah. and this preceded our research and work on the report itself. But you were on the, each of the stages of the work on the report together with us, and I'm very curious on, on your remarks and, and, and opinion on that. Thank you so much. Thank you for a splendid presentation. Um, just on a ceremonial and honor uh, a note, um, uh, you, the three of you, plus uh, Dr. Sish and uh, the others involved in your team, have done such a tremendous job for, uh, for our nation um, and for other nations as well. Uh, and um, one of the things I really appreciate is the thoroughness and the quality of your work. Uh, even even the, uh, the, the report is so nicely made. I mean, you're obviously putting a lot of resources into this. And when you choose a place to have this presentation, although competing with governmental shiftings in Norway, you choose the most expensive place in available, which to me speaks volumes about your respect for Norway, your respect for our institutions and our culture. So uh, that I really appreciate. And I'd like to, on behalf of Christian Coalition, which I uh, I'm the chairman of, I'd like to give you a small token of something that maybe I don't, I'm not proud of every aspect of the, of the photo pictures on this, but, but the, it's certainly something that we really uh, love as Norwegians. We like to be the, the, the rascals, we love to be the Vikings, the hordes that, you know, take the world, uh, sometimes in not so good ways. But here is a a little reminder for you when you have your cup of tea or coffee. Thank you very much. Here's a little reminder for you. Thank you very much. And here's a little reminder for you. And uh, tough luck, Dr. Sish is not getting it because he's not Thank here. You. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let's give them a little applause if you don't mind. Um, I think uh, reading again through the report yesterday, it strikes me how, how, uh, how challenging it is and its professionalism and its, um, uh, its um, compliance with international standards of law um, and, and the, 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 the clarity with which you present your arguments. Uh, now, I remember when you presented the first uh, version of it one year ago here in Oslo, uh, how it was and of course it has developed since then, but really 
looking now one year later and two years after you started, you've already won. The thing is that this primer, this is, should be a primer uh, in Norwegian uh, Barnevan or similar institutions of training in the future. I believe something will come of that sort. Uh, but you have already laid the framework for our country and uh, even for the international standards, uh, I mean the uh, international judgments on Norway. So this is a really a remarkable work that identifies the problems, analyzes them, and presents solutions. Um, I think one thing that, um, that we need to uh, appreciate is that although your work is remarkable, and also uh, like uh, Alliance Defending Freedom, uh, in uh, both Strasbourg and Vienna and London, etc. Uh, the probably the, re the, the greatest reason why we're winning so many cases now in Strasbourg is the, is the combination of Dr. Valery Gilecki's report, which was thorough, uh, and he talked to all sides. By the way, I have heartfelt greetings and congratulations from my close friend, uh, psychology specialist, Aina Salveson. He's on vacation with his wife in the Canary Islands and uh, is smarting to want to be here instead. But he can't. But he really acknowledges your work. Uh, Dr. Gilecki met with uh, uh, Salveson and other experts on our side and uh, saw the flaws. And he, by presenting that case for PACE and uh, getting such a massive result uh, in pace, which could have been even more actually had the <coughs> Polish representatives actually been there and voted. Uh, and the Romanians, they stayed home because they were busy with other things. So, I mean, it could have become 85%, you know, if we had really mobilized. Uh, but Dr. Ilecki laid the framework and uh, he, he helped me understand that what pace uh, passes as a resolution becomes a, an important premise for the Court, court of Human Rights. So that, I think, is a very important thing. The other important thing is, which also uh, Dr. Gilecki was uh, uh, fundamentally involved in, is that, because he was the chairman of the Judges Selection Committee in Salzburg, um, when the former Norwegian Supreme Court, or European Court judge, had to leave his office, the new uh, appointee was uh, discussed by Norway, and they presented many, many suggestions, but none of them were accepted. Finally, uh, Dr. Gilecki and the committee found three candidates that were acceptable. And uh, we were uh, personally involved also in interviewing the candidates. Uh, Dr. Arvind Bordson, who won the vote, Jürgen, Dr. Jürgen Ohl, who, who would have been a very able uh, judge, judge from Norway. But when Dr. Bordson, who probably does not agree with Ordo de Juris, nor any of our environments, he saw the need to take this seriously. And I did not realize that until then, in 2019, there were just a few cases from Norway that were accepted. And why? It's simply because the justice from a nation has the sole power to okay that a case comes through. And the former justice was not okaying it. But uh, Dr. Bordson okayed it. So that's why we got a rush here that came through. So there are some, uh, some converging factors that are very important to understand why we're seeing this going on and why your work is so relevant right now and is a tool in the hands of the courts. Now, the actual content uh, of the report has been very uh, strongly presented by you. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm struck by your, your sensitivity to how to get this across in the Norwegian setting. Uh, you're showing respect, you're, you're, you're strictly professional and academic in your approach, which I think is wonderful. Uh, and I think that because of that, there's a chance that it can reach uh, the, the minds and the decision processes of the courts in Norway, and even finally into Barnevarne itself and the political institutions. But I think there's some work that needs to be done now with this report. Um, if I may suggest, and again, it's going to cost you a lot of money, which you've already spending a lot of to help Norway. I think you have a big task to do with the church in Norway. Uh, not just the Roman Catholic Church, but the other churches in Norway. 
Uh, apart from myself, I don't think there's one single pastor in Norway except my good friend Jan Hanvold, who owns TV Vision Norway, who actually is involved and speaks strongly on these matters. And I think there's a huge potential by having seminars uh, conducted by Ordo Juris, recruiting some experts from Norway to present this for the various churches in Norway, which are all a part of the so-called, what you call the Northern model, which in Norway tends to be called the Norwegian model. And the, the whole church has accepted this model, which is a fundamentally a Marxist, Leninist model, uh, which comes out of, of the, 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 the old communist regimes. Uh, I have this from my good friends in the various embassies in Oslo from the Eastern Bloc, the former Eastern Bloc, who tell me that this is the way we were thinking before, and this has been implemented in Norway and is subtly made a part of the so-called Norwegian model. We, the church has made this a part of our existence, and we have to shatter that. I still remember when I, 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 you know, I have been married once before, and I remember my, my first marriage, how my ex-wife suggested that maybe we should become a foster parent because that would be like a missionary task. And that has been the way we are presented in our way in the Christian movement that being foster parents is really like being a missionary, taking care of the homeless and the, the, the needy children without really thinking through the, the, the fundamental need for family and biological family and the connection between the wider family. Um, so I think there's some work to do here of fundamental nature. I would also encourage you to go, uh, to, go to all these church bodies. You'll find a st it will be a stiff uphill battle, I promise you. Even in Norway, the Roman Catholic Church is in no way uh, of the same uh, standards as the Polish Roman Catholic Church. Uh, I s uh, humbly submit this. Uh, and my own Pentecostal movement is still absolutely not uh, that way either. But I think you have a lot to gain there. The other aspect that I think is really important now is to work uh, constructively with the legal profession. Uh, personally, I'm making now a television show for TV Vision Norway, and I'm, getting, I'm making headway into the highest echelons of the Norwegian judicial system and into the psycho psychological system, and that will shock Norway when it comes. Uh, but I think you, with your factual and anal analytical basis, need to have meetings with the Supreme Court, with the various courts in Norway. You need to set up seminars and actually gain their trust and respect. Because fundamentally, they're not bad people. Although uh, I have talked with uh, the sharpest knife in, in Nor Norway's uh, uh, judicial uh, drawer, uh, Dr. Carl August Fleischer, who wrote his monumental book in 2006 called Co Corruption Culture in Norway, which is very shockingly accurate. Still, I think that there are so many uh, judges and, uh, and uh, 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 lawyers in Norway that are very hungry to learn and to rethink. And I think you have your greatest task ahead in meeting with them and helping them to understand. Thirdly and lastly, in my little comment, um, you said that you, you analyze the southern versus the northern uh, uh, models. Uh, and I see that when I travel, for example, in Kosovo and Albania, Romania, Bulgaria, uh, Hungary, and other nations, um, that the Norwegian model, the Nordic model, is being presented as a part of the Norwegian uh, Norway funds package, uh, which is like in Norwegian terms, it's AES money, uh, which the EU has allowed Norway to use at our discretion the way we want. And I know that I've sit with members of parliament in Albania, uh, in uh, Romania, and other countries, and they say, they come here and they present us with great packages of money, of opportunity, of travel, of respect. And we, we, we need that. And then we grab it. <coughs> That's something that Euler Juris, ADF, and other competent legal agencies need to challenge the whole system in Europe because I think that Norway should not be allowed by the European uh, the various courts to do this uh, now that it's being proven time and time again that we're breaking uh, the European 
Convention on Human Rights on vital points. So please, you've got massive work to do, uh, Mr. Kostievsky and your colleagues in years to come, and I hope you will have the stamina and the strength and the money to do it. Thank you very much for your warm words on our work and, and, and some remarks. Uh, as to the last point, uh, two years ago we have published the uh, fully analysis on the Norwegian grants, Norwegian funds in Poland. Uh, that was the basis for the current government uh, to renegotiate the structure of those funds being uh, streamed into Poland as they are in fact the payment for the access to the market. Uh, so should be used in a proper way uh, accordingly uh, to the policy of the state and nation, not accordingly to the policy of the foreign ministry of the Kingdom of Norway, uh, as it was presented uh, before 2015. Uh, and yes, of course, those all are very important issues, especially while we are working together to implement this now affirmed by the uh, European Court of Human Rights, the proper model of foster care and child protection services that uh, reassure the priority of the biological family and the best interest of the child strongly connected with the need to reunificate the child uh, from the foster care to the biological family. Let's have a 10 minutes coffee break and after the coffee break we'll go back to the, uh, to the panel this time uh, asking all the lawyers here to participate and to uh, take part in the panel of experts. Thank you very much.